Picking up where I left off last time, I contemplated putting this board on top of the OSD VTX. And the reason I contemplated doing that is that it will let you keep access to the bootloader button very easily and it'll make maintenance easier since you can get out all these pads and stuff if you need to do maintenance. The reason I did not end up going that way, I still think that's the best way to do it, but I, um, these wires are, some of these wires are just a little too short to, um, to let it rise up like that. And I don't have exactly the right length of standoff to give it just enough clearance here. So I am going to put this board on top, but I think if you were to build this yourself, the smart thing to do would be to put the flight controller on top and the VTX OSD on bottom because you're never going to need to get at this. There's nothing you need to get to, but there is like the bootloader button and stuff you need to get to there. I checked with Furious and confirmed that they didn't think uh, heat dissipation or anything like that would be an issue. So no worries there. They did not think that would be an issue. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual these days. I am going to not direct solder. I'm not going to depin, and I'm not going to direct solder my receiver. And the reason for that is, well, number one, this is a pretty roomy frame. There's no pressure here to, uh, to squeeze everything in. So there's no sense making your life harder just on principle. And the other thing is, you know, I mean, that's going to make maintenance easier. Um, so, so yeah. The other thing is I'm, I'm just feeling kind of lazy right now, and I don't well, want to depin this. So um, here's a, oh, look at that. What is that? Do you remember those? It was a servo lead. How about that? What a concept. I should, somebody saw me doing this today, putting the soldering iron down and holding the wire on the solder. And he was, he saw me doing this the other day. And he was like, I never thought of that. <laughs> and it kind of blew his mind just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Okay. Got that. So then they're tinned. And I'm going to. Shorten them up. It's actually a little longer than I would usually do it. I'm not going to come in from the bottom. See, this is, I, I'm just, if you do it like that, I could do it like that, I guess. I could do it. See, the problem is, if you come in from the top, then if you go through the hole, then it just, when you have to rework it for any reason, it just makes a lot of hassle for you because this little bit of wire is left in the hole. So what I normally do is I cut them pretty short, and I lay them on top and just solder them that way. And you get slightly less sort of physical strength doing that. But it's, it's not, it's not, I've never had it be an issue. It's not like you're tugging too much on this, I hope. So let's shorten these up just a smidge to about maybe two millimeters. That's what I'm going to shoot for. So for S-Bus, this is going to be ground, 5 volts. And then the fourth one here is going to be the S-Bus pad. Now, a person might be apt to put it on this way because it's going to come out of there. But actually, if I'm not, if I'm sure that I'm not going to use these pads, I think it makes more sense to put it on going this way, so that you can then curve it out and the the joint itself is not under any stress. It's under less stress. I just think it ends up cleaner that way.
I want to show you guys what that looked like. Um, this is not, I'm going to go back and retouch this, but soldering it with the, you know, my arms around the camera was a little tricky, of course. This is, especially the, the ground wire, you can see it is standing well above the solder. It's stuck, but it's not in the ball of solder, in the little bulb of solder. And that's, that's not how you want it. That's not a good joint. That's not a trustworthy joint. I would not trust that uh, at all. That one is very dry. You can see there is no ball of solder there. Uh, again, it's stuck, and a, an amateur might think that was done, but it's not. Of the three, I think the uh, red wire, the power wire, is the closest to, like, legit. It has a fillet. Let me see if I can get it from the side. You can see that it has a fillet, and the fillet kind of comes halfway up the wire. The wire is almost fully in the ball of solder, but still not fully in. So none of these is an acceptable joint uh, at all because I was working around the camera. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to fix it without the camera being there. And now of those, I think that signal wire is the best one. It's a, it's a, a clean ball. It fully encloses the, uh, the, the wire. The red one is not bad, I think. And the ground wire. The ground wire is still a little bit standing above the, uh, it's not really clean up against the pad. I would retouch that one. Now as for the buzzer, uh, there, I can't, I tried and I can't think of any clever way to mount the buzzer to the actual pads on the board. Um, sometimes I'll put the, uh, one leg through one hole and then the buzzer will hang off the edge and the other leg will sort of reach underneath. To the other hole to the underside of the other hole i don't know that, it, that, that doesn't work in this case because this standoff is too close it just doesn't work so i can't think of any clever way to get the buzzer mounted on the board so i'm just going to leave myself this length of wire and i'll figure out exactly where i want the buzzer to be after i finish the build okay so then you know the uh the osd and vtx board goes on top uh, this wire goes between these two plugs you can see the one on the flight controller underneath one on the OSD board above. I've given it some twists and that's just how I like to take up the slack on a cable. Just enough twists that it kind of curls in on itself a little bit. A little technique there I guess. Um, this camera wire, uh, I've made this myself. Um, I get, when the board got shipped to me it wasn't in retail packaging and the camera wire that uh, it didn't come with the camera wire. So, um, so when you see that I've had to rig this up uh, this is this I provided, so that's not what yours will look like. Um, I think, since obviously there's no way for Furious to know what your camera connector is going to look like, I think they're the, they're going to have to send you this connector, and then you'll splice it to your own camera wire. So I think you will have a splice here. Although if you're very clever, the um, the pins you can actually take these pins out. You just lift that little tab right there. And, and the pin slides right out. So if you did have a wire with this connector on one side, but those aren't even the same pins, are they? I don't know. I'm not sure. There's all these little pins. They're different. Yeah, see, they're different lengths, and I don't know. Probably better off just splicing the wires. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up the smart port telemetry to a UART so that we can get telemetry. If you're not using FreeSky or you're not using telemetry, you can just skip this step. Uh, this is the FreeSky X4R SB receiver that I'm using, and this is going to be the, the smart port header right here. And this is the standard wire header that comes with it. It's got the servo connector here for 5 volt ground and uh, signal, and this yellow wire is the smart port wire that you need. There's also an analog sensor for analog voltage in. Um, if you decide to use this, you must build a voltage divider to bring it down to 3.3 volts or less. You cannot plug this directly into VBAT or you will fry the receiver, so, so don't do that. Um, well, the simplest thing I think to do is to connect the, uh, the smart port telemetry to the flight controller and just let the flight controller report VBAT. It reports it to the Tyrannus as VFAS, VFAS, that's the sensor that it will report it under. And it's just the VBAT that the flight controller is reading. Oh, there, there you go. It's just the um, 
for the, the VBAT that the flight controller is reading that it passes back through. If for some reason you don't want to do it that way, you can use the white wire and you can build a voltage divider. If you look on my channel, how to build a, a voltage sensor, I think this is the keyword voltage sensor perhaps. I have a video on how to build the voltage divider so you can use the analog input. Um, but I just like to use the telemetry. So what let's do is let's think about how long is this hang on, get off of there, you. I got a little premature putting this board on. I forgot about telemetry. So, so it's going to come from about here. It's going to go this way. Let's make it about as long as the signal wire. We're going to need to cut it about there. Okay, great. And then the other thing you can do is you could just cut these wires off, but I find that to be a little bit untidy. So just separate out that yellow wire and then get something really fine. Like I like to use this file. And yes, that's carbon dust on my file. It's getting on my skin. I'm sure that's really bad for me and I shouldn't do that. So you're just going to um, lift that tab up. And when you do that, You can pull this wire right out, like so. And you can just do that for all the wires, and then it's nice and clean and neat. And if you just push that tab back down a little, you, it's good to go and ready to reuse. So in this case, the, um, the SBUS input is here, and the telemetry output is there. At least, that's I'm pretty sure that's right. I'll double check that against the diagram. but. Since I'm not passing these through the holes, I'm just laying them on top of the holes. If I have a case like that, I run the wire 45 degrees off to the side, and that means that the two wires don't overlap each other, and there's no chance of, like, if the insulation splits a little bit of the one wire that overlaps, a shorting to the other one or anything like that. Let me give you a closer look there. Eh, neat minute now. There we go. And there's a closer look for you at how I've done that. A trick that I like to use is to use a, um, well, this is not M3, it's a 7.30 seconds, a 7.30 seconds ratchet head. Um, if, if, you had a, if I had a 7.30 seconds driver handy, yeah, I might use that, but I don't. I've just got this laying around. Using this, it gives you, if you were to use like an actual nut driver or ratchet, it would be really easy to over tighten these little nylon screws and nuts and strip them out. So using something like this by hand to do it, uh, helps you be sensitive enough that you don't do that while still making it a lot easier to than trying to do it by just by by finger. So that's something I keep around my bench.